Hey guys, my name is Jake Tellis. I'm a music producer and mix engineer. And today I'd like to show you some plugins from Slate Digital. So at AES, which is like the audio convention, they announced that their everything bundle, which includes pretty much all their plugins, the price went down to $14.99. And what's really cool about this is that, say you don't want to spend $5,000 or something upfront to buy each license. So if you get on their subscription plan, you pay $14.99 a month and they're always adding new plugins. So your price stays the same and you always get new stuff. So... You know, and, and you can pretty much mix a record just using their plugins, so it's a solid deal and definitely worth checking out. They're great sounding plugins with a really nice looking interface. And you can check them out at slatedigital.com and they tell you all the stuff that comes with it. And I will show you some of it in this video, which I have an unmixed song. And basically it's a produced song and there's some live instruments and a lot of program stuff. And I felt like the acoustic guitars that are live, and although I like the part, I found that the sound wasn't blending in that well. Like it was working, but not great. So let's actually hear a, like a couple bars of his track with everything on, with no processing on. And I would like to note that there's no mixing on this track aside for some fader levels. And the only thing I was messing with was the acoustic guitar with some reverb. So right now everything's dry. Now let's quickly check out the after and then I'll go through and kind of show you what I did and maybe we'll solo the guitars. So here's with everything on and I have FGN, compressor, another compressor, revival, and a trimmer. Oh, and VCC, we can't forget about that. So let's have a listen. All right, so I mean, it's it's subtle, but to me that was a big difference. It kind of glues much better into the mix. It's taking up less space and also is a bit brighter, but I took out some of the nasty frequencies that were in around 1K. So let's actually solo this guitar up. And let's bypass the slate and let's hear it soloed. Even though when we're mixing, of course, it only matters how it sounds with everything together. But I thought for to show you the plugin and to show you really the before and after, it's cool to kind of zoom in on it and, and really check it out. So let's play it now in solo with no plugins on, just some reverb. So in my opinion, it's not a bad sounding acoustic guitar. Um, I quite like it, but I felt like there were some things that could be better. I thought it could be a little thicker sounding. It could be a little less tinny on the top end. And at the same time, be a little more squeezed and have a bit more glue on the compression. And also have a bit more brilliance up, up at top and more shimmer. So let's actually now play it in solo with everything on. And then I'll go through each plug and I'll kind of tell you what I did. Cool. So the first thing I have in my channel strip here is the VCC, which always are part of the VMR, which is their virtual mix rack. And I had the input up a bit and I have them linked. So when you, when I was putting up the input, the output is down, which is kind of cool. And you can unlink it if you want over here. I'm using the Brit N console, which to me sounds really thick and nice. I have the drive up quite a bit, which is also helping the thickness. I have noise reduction on. And on FGN, which, which is what I did the most DQing on, I'm boosting a drop with a high shelf, less than a dB. Um, at 7.2K, I'm also doing about uh, 2.5 dB. And the biggest move I, th I thought that actually helped this was taking away at about 1.5K, uh, about 5.5 dB, which, you know, that was a tinnitus. And I can actually just kind of turn this off and play real quick and then turn it on while it's playing so you can hear it as it's going. It's on. And just to show you the extreme, but what I'll actually do is I'll boost the frequency that I was cutting so you can really hear kind of what it was doing in the mix. So as you can hear, as I did really quickly, I kind of boosted it really quick and I could listen to it for more than a second. So I slowly kind of turned it back down to what I had it to. And in my opinion, that made a lot of room and made it sound brighter on the top end as in like above 1k because i made that room and it wasn't as harsh and taking up that nasty frequencies all right so at 100 hertz i'm cutting less than a db uh, on the high pass here i'm cutting at 41 hertz and down 
Uh, I didn't mess with the line. I didn't use a drive, but you could use a drive to get a really cool kind of saturation if you crank the line. And next, I'm, I have two compressors. First is the FG116 FET compressor, which is based on an 1176. And I have the input crank quite a bit. And the output is at minus 16. Uh, 4 to 1 ratio. I have the attack on medium. And I have the release on the slowest, so, which is about 7. I have noise reduction on. And I love these mix knobs. So essentially, what the mix knob lets you do is blend in the dry signal with the wet signal. So the wet signal being the compressed signal. So I have it mixed in about 50% wet. And that's pretty much that. It's helping glue it together. Next, I have the Monster, which is their Extreme Dynamic Processor, which is basically an all-buttons-in mode on 1176 on steroids. So I have the attack on fastest. I had the least on the slowest. I have input cranked a bit. I didn't mess with the output. And I have the HPF set at about 100 hertz, so it's not going to react. And I didn't mess with the high frequencies. And again, I love the mix knobs. So on this... You know, when, if I hit play, you'll see that it's doing quite a bit, but I have it set at 20%. Yeah, so as you saw up there, that was hitting about maybe like 10, 15 dB of reduction. But since it was set to 20%, it's not really doing that. So it's more just helping it really sparkle and be a bit thicker in the mix. Next, we have Revival, which is basically a sonic enhancer. And there's only two knobs, really easy to use. It's hard to make it sound bad. So one is shimmer, which is dealing with like more top end, and then thickness is more bass and low frequencies. So I have these up a bit, and you know, all this combined helped it sound like this. And just to be reminded what it sounded like, let's actually bypass this and let's hit play and hear what it sounded like before. So as you can hear, maybe me going back and forth, you're starting to hear what harshness I didn't like around the 1.5k area. But additionally, I did thicken it up with VCC and, and the compressors, and the Revival topped it out at the end, just kind of adding a little more shimmer and thickness. And these plugins are super easy to use. They look nice, they sound great. Uh, and I definitely like the rack interface, where I can load up plugins in, into one interface. And again, you know, there's a bunch of other plugins that you can see on the side here. The Yosis EQs, compressors, EQs, and one more compressor, which is the Monster, which we, we have on here, Trimmer. Uh, the VCC console emulation and mix bus. And I don't have the uh, their classic tubes, which goes along with our microphones, which I don't have, but they look great. And also their uh, preamp emulations, which are FG73 and the FG76, which I, I actually got to get those. So anyway, this is a great tool, 15 bucks a month. And you get all this plus some other plugins that I didn't go over in this video. And they're always adding new stuff and you pay the same price. They don't raise the price when they add new plugins. You keep getting new stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you like this video, definitely hit that like button on the video. And leave me a comment if you'd like to see anything else in future videos. And uh, subscribe if you aren't already. And yeah, have a great day. Thanks for watching.